Good morning everyone, Jacques from Dapper Shaves with another owning video. We're going to hone up this Japanese frame back razor. It's a bacon or biken. We'll have a look at this closely. Um, here's another one. I have done an ASM, ASMR shave video with this one. It's um, more of a wedge. So I'm going to put up a link here. Uh, if you want to go and check out the shave with this um, very nice razors out of Japan. So this one is a frame back. For those of you that don't know what's a frame back, when the, in the early 1900s when um, the Germans were grinding extra hollow grinds with the X machine. The rest of the world were still a little bit behind in that. And so they needed to innovate. Um, it's not just the Japanese that did that, that. There's many brands that, um, countries that made um, frame bags, France, uh, Sheffield, uh, including, uh, I think, Wayne Butcher too. So it's it's not something new. They're fantastic shavers. So what they do is they take the quality steel in a sheet and they mount it in a frame, which is made of cheap steel. And so you reduce the, the cost significantly, but more also the skill and labor to produce these things. So essentially it's just the sheet that's gone in there that gives you that hollowness or the thinness um, with great quality steel and put into a frame. That's what it is. We're going to own this up. This razor isn't very sharp. Um, it had some, uh, some rust and some restoration required. So we are going to hone up this razor. We are going to do that on this stone, it's a Iwatani. Um, by now, you would have seen the stone. Um, it's into a buying and evaluation video I made some time ago. I'll put up a link here somewhere if you want to go and have a look at it. It's the stone with that had the stamps on. We've got some Naguras here we're going to use when we've eventually set the bevel to, to refine to get it to shave ready. And I have got a little diamond plate here we're going to use as, um, as an Agura. And I've got my little trusty loop here which we're going to use every now and again. So the very first thing is uh, my Naguras have been um, rinsed and washed and put onto a clean stone or a tray. Same with this stone, I'm just hydrating it. So Nagura, the word Nagura actually means correcting stone. So um, before the invention of the diamond plate and the lapping plate, you had to maintain your stones by eyeballing them and then leveling the high, high spots so that you maintain your stone level. So that is the meaning behind a correction stone. So you would go and check it against a nice backlight. You're going to see where the eye spots are and you're going to take your correcting stone, Nagura, and you're going to um, keep the stone nice and flat, uh, evenly as far as possible. So um, these things are correcting. So the first thing is depending on the grit of the stone you're using, um, you will also change the surface of the stone. So it, it not just corrects and keeps your stone flat, but it also dresses the surface um, to the appropriate uh, grit or coarseness you require for the work you want to do. So as an example, um, a boton is, uh, this one's around th uh, the 3K mark, so um, I would create 3K slurry, but also a 3K dressing um, on the base stone. And then if I move up to a, to a tenju, which is more in the 4 to 5K range, then I'm going to once again 
not just keep the stone flat and condition it, but also change the, the, the dressing, the surface, and so forth. So keep that in mind. Um, what I want to do is we need to set the bevel. So uh, I want to create actually quite a lot of mud. Um, the more mud you've got, or the more slurry you've got, the more abrasive particles you've loosened, and then the more, um, the higher the, the, the cutting efficiency. So you've got more grit in the mix, and the more grit you have, obviously, the quicker you cut. So we're going to start with that. I've already inspected um, the edge under the microscope. Um, this bit has got a small little chip in there, but the bevel is essentially set. And then the, the more you work towards the, the heel, the less the bevel is set. But in this area, at least, there is no chips. So I'm going to start off by establishing the bevel more properly here, get that done, and then slowly blend over onto this area and then work on the chip area. I hope that makes sense. I'm starting off, first of all, as you'll see, there's already quite a lot of swell forming, and that's coming from the softer iron on the, on, on the frame. But essentially, I've got a lot of bias towards... Um, the edge and that is to minimize the wear on on the spine and focus the cutting power onto the edge um, you'll see these things are actually quite um, firm so they can take quite a lot of pressure um, when owning don't overdo this because obviously if you push it too far it's going to bend and lift the edge um, away from the stone. Current pressure, edge biased, I think is, I don't know, 400 grams of pressure. And I'm now starting slowly to walk up the edge. And the stone cuts quite quick and we've got nice mud going here so some swarf already nice in this in the slurry and what I want to do now is stop and inspect what I've done this black swarf comes from somewhere so I need to make sure it's coming from the right areas And so I'm starting to see a better, a better formation of the bevel on, on the heel, on both sides. And I've got the Jack Russell on the other side of the swimming pool that's losing patience with me for not want to play. So I'm going to quickly do a couple of strokes and then I'm going to pause the video. Um, because I also need to refresh the slurry and then we'll uh, come back and continue so I just want to get this done nicely yeah my lovely papa come now hmm? okay so um Back in a moment. <laughs> There's a small little residue still left of the chip. Um, but this stone cuts quite quick, so the customer who stones this is going to enjoy the benefit of that. 
I'm not going to use a diamond no gura now. I think I'm just going to start stepping through um, the progression. And I've barely thrown the tennis ball and the little terrorist is staring me blank in the face. Um, looking for attention. So this is the um, tenju. So this is the wrong stone. Here we go, here's the botan. This is the courser of the stones. You do get other courser um, naguras, um, but they're generally not prescribed for um, razor owning. In fact, I just got delivered a tennis ball, which I need to now just quickly rinse my hand as well. Okay, so um, Bautan, the coarser one, as I say, this one's in the 3K range. It's a Zano Nagura. Um, there's the Zano stamp, um, which is owned by Sakamoto. Uh, Shiru Mikawa, the my name. Um, this is um, a white. And then also then the Bautan, the last symbol. So... Once again, I'm changing the dressing um, of the stone. So where the diamond plate was um, a very warm 1,200. So that thing's most likely, I don't know, 2,000, if I've got a guess. With this one, um, this is about 3K, but the stone is softer. So what it's doing is the bulk of the uh, slurry is actually coming from the stone and very little from um, the Iwatani. And so once again, I want to create a, a thick slurry. After this one, we will have um, a lot thinner slurry um, when we start refining the edge. So at this point in time, I know the bevel's fundamentally set and um, that high pressure I was using during the honing, I've reduced now a lot from where I was using about 400 grams, I'm now using about 100 grams of pressure. And what I'll do is, after this, I'll essentially just start making... Um, Use of the razor weight only shortly. We'll just keep working the areas at about 100 grams of pressure. And then making sure I can feel the same consistent feeling feedback across the entire edge. Uh, I can't remember if, if I've mentioned in some of my other videos, but I'll do again. Sometimes you get a razor that has got a lot of rust or pitting, especially high on the spine. And so these little pit marks, those pit marks, when you move it over the stone, will feel coarse and not quite right. So don't confuse that feedback you might sometimes get of um, pit marks on the spine if you've got a old razor versus what you're feeling on the edge on the stone. I hope that made sense. So know the razor very very well, know exactly where the areas are and that will help you refine your dexterity feel and feedback when you owning the razor. And I'm not trying to let this stuff sound like some voodoo or magic. It's just things you need to consider. It's the small little details. People's got a tendency in getting this done and living under a microscope um, instead of um, using those things as guides and then learning and feeling and getting the dexterity to know what's happening. Done waffling. Apologies for that. So, 
slurry breaks down as you use it, JNAT slurry. So this is most likely broken down from a 3K particle down to, let's say, a 4K particle. I'm guessing um, if you've got a very good quality microscope, this is the time to go now take some photos and images and see where, we, where you're at before you jump to the next stone. And that's how you can answer some of these things I mentioned now. So I'm done with the, with the boat on. So the boat on, we're done. We're now going to use Heaven and Sky, the Tenju. And I'm going to create um, quite a light slurry. And that's the type of slurry we're going to continue moving forward until we hit coma. When coma comes, we'll, we, we'll reduce the slurry a bit more to a finer one and then eventually um, I'm going to finish with um, either um, the spotted um, Iwasaki Select or um, that same stone maybe on a, on a, on a black Arkansas. But I want to for the purposes of this video, do a full finishing progression using these Japanese stones. Heaven and Sky, we're also just going to do one, one progression with that. As I say, I'm comfortable with what the bevel looks like and feel like. It's now just a matter of refining. Pressure I've reduced now, let's call it 50 grams or less. So it's essentially just the razor on the stone and uh, maybe a little bit of biased pressure towards the edge in the 50 gram range. Once again, you want to make sure you're undercutting nicely everywhere the same way. This specific steel on this razor is not um, very, very hard, but it's definitely not soft, Sheffield soft. It's maybe um, in between a Sheffield and a Solingen kind of vintage hardness with the steels. And this slurry is now broken down to, let's call it a 5K. Um, because the transitioning from the last bit of Botan slurry onto this new slurry didn't change the sensation. It's just getting finer and smoother. And so we're going to stop here. I quickly want to grab the scope and just confirm that I'm tracking good. Otherwise, we're doing all this work. And if it's not right, um, then we need to step step back because you're not going to be capable of fixing beginning and mid-range steps. Um, I've got a water spot on, on the lens. Otherwise you're not going to um, correct any problems or if you made a mistake um, with stones higher up. Right. What we're going to do next is we're going to move up and I'm going to do two, two progressions um, with Mohiro. Just one second. My co-pilot wanted to get picked up, 
so I just had to go and rinse my hands after that. We don't want dog ears. So my hero creates a, a, a creamier slurry um, in relation to the rest of the stones. This one, uh, where the other stones we've been working with are the, um, the white stones, this one is a striped, striped mojiro. And this one creates a pinky slurry, but you will see here's a lot of green slurry in here. So these two stones hardness is very, very similar. So um, this customer, Yo, yo, Iwatani is as a base stone very comparable to Mohiro. Very fine. It cuts very, very quick. Um, and I can tell you this is going to be um, a great razor finisher. You'll see the more I work this, the more of the, um, the Mohiro slurry comes in, but essentially it's a mix between the green the green and the, what is supposed to be, um, I don't know, a pinkish color, I think. In any case, there we have got some Mojiro slurry. I uh, wanna just rinse the razor quickly again. And as I said, we're going to do two progressions um, with the slurry. And then we're going to eat the coma and then um, based on the stone fineness, I think we're going to finish just with a couple of um, finishing strokes using some soapy water on this Iwatani. By that time, um, the coma stones is in the, I don't know, 8K range, 6 to 8K range. And once again, you cannot associate a grit number um, to natural stones because they don't work that way. The particle size is different, but I'm putting these numbers down to give you an idea of context of how it's moved up. Not that that is the finishing. Um, if I've got to compare a razor finished using this kind of progression, national progression, finished. That for me is going to be at least 15 to 20k range if you had to compare it to a synthetic um, fineness. And it's all about the particle shape not the size um, and how they cut. I'm not going to cover it here. I might actually drop in a little picture that describes it. But essentially natural stone particles are more round and so in that regard, they don't have got a deep scratch valley or pattern which they create. Whereas synthetic abrasives all have got very pointy, sharp um, abrasive particles. And in that regard, even though they very fine, create a deeper scratch than a larger but rounder particle. And that is where a smoother comfortable, less harsh, harsh edge comes from. All right, we're going to add a second progression and then we're going to jump to coma. 15 minutes in, I stopped the video. I think the first bit was about five or 10 minutes. So I guess we're already 22 to 25 minutes in. I don't want to rush this video. Um, so bear with me, it might be a little bit longer. But this is the last of the Mohiro. And then we're going to hit the coma. The coma is quite actually an interesting one. It is this one. 
This is a striped coma. You do not find them a lot. Um, this one's, um, they're harder than the pure white, but I think they are finer and they seem to cut slightly quicker. So the patron and supporter that um, sent me this stone to use, thank you very much. It's gonna get some camera action. And then also I can't wait for mine to arrive, um, which is also an order. Also a striped one. So that one you guys will see uh, a bit more regular. If it is what I, um, I like and prefer. I've really worked through the Mojiro slurry quite quickly because what I, what I feel on the edge um, is really nice and encouraging. It's like working on glass. The other thing about slurry, and it's important to have some kind of slurry in there, slurry also acts as a bit of a lubricant. All these little round golf balls, for lack of a better word, is the surface where it rolls on, so it creates that um, lubrication. Um, and you get this really glossy sensation. I'm quite sure you can hear it too. And so right here, I'm getting a lot of vacuum um, that it causes drag and resistance between the polished surfaces and the water. Some folk, including me previously, um, refer to that as stiction, but I don't think that's really the, the better word. It is that vacuum that is creating some suction or, or resistance in drag. I'm done with this. What I'm going to do is just quickly pause the video because I want to go and um, rinse the razor in my hands properly um, and then also fill my water bottle and then we'll get back. Okay, so we're back. What we are now going to do is we're going to run the coma. So we've done um, two more heroes. Now I know from experience that this stone is actually quite hard, so it can um, help with some soaking. I'm not fond of it because it can cause cracking. I'm not so it does. But this stone I know is um, quite hard and fine. So it's harder than this stone. So it can um, scratch it if you use a lot of pressure. So with this one, um, you need to be nice and gentle and take your time and make sure um, you generate the slurry. Little scratches can form and so forth. Um, for me, that's never been an issue, um, but we're all different. We all experience things differently. I've got different expectations and so forth. So um, be aware of that. The other thing is with Como, we don't need a very, very, very thick slurry. But I'm going to start with, I don't know, a medium one, reduce that, and then add maybe a little bit of um, fresh slurry later on a very light one, and then we're going to finish up. So the edge really looks good under the scope. Um, and if all goes well, um, we'll have a, a shave with this. So this coma slurry, um, even though the stone is um, striped, uh, is white. It's not like the Mahiro that has got that um, darker orange tint to it. And you will see yes also um, because <coughs> the coma is slightly harder. This um, white has got a slight green, green tint to it because there's also some slurry from the base stone in here, which we know is super fine. And um, this is nice and velvet, velvet soft. I really like this um, striped coma slurry, especially in conjunction with this Iwatani. 
really nice little bench stone this Iwatani is a, is a western mine they produce killer stones at affordable prices um, people tend to look into the Nakayamas and the Ozukas and so forth and, and, and they have got some great stones they come at a premium I don't believe they're any better than some of the stones from uh, the other mines as an example, Iowa Tani. The stone mines perfect. We've got that Asagi looking one. Um, well, Asagi is the color, the Nakayama Asagi impression one, that gray one. I haven't got it here. It's on my bench behind me. I'll go and uh, grab that. But that's a Iowa Tani. Uh, fantastic edges. So in that video I linked around um, introduction and evaluating stones, you'll see I've got quite a big, big talk about not reading too much into names and um, we still eat stone, that's the business end of things and that's the only bit that's important. Man, this razor feels good on the stone, so I'm going to stop. I'm going to uh, rinse this down. We're going to rinse the stone down. We are going to do a couple of strokes just with water. And then I think um, I'm going to maybe try a soap solution. And then this thing should shave like a champion. Really nice, smooth, consistent feel all over. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to introduce um, a little bit of uh, more slip and just changing the surface tension in the water and reducing the pressure significantly. I want to call this no negative pressure honing because I'm actually trying to lift the razor off the stone. Look at that bubble. <laughs> There's another one. Really, really fantastic. Feel that I'm getting from the stone, so um, I think we're done. So what I want to do is um, rinse this down. Rinse my gloves down. a bit of a strop so once again um, <clears throat> thank you for the new patrons uh, um, subscribers and new patron um, I'm slowly approaching 300 subscribers, so really thank you guys, appreciate it. Hope we can grow the channel a bit more. Um, I've got lots more razors coming in and content and stones, and so this thing is just mowing through hairs effortlessly. Really, really nice. So, um, I want to scan this under the scope quickly. Really nice, clean, um, clean, even bevel. 
I think it's going to be a great shave. And then the other thing is these razors, they don't give them a muted point, but you'll see they do a 45 here on the corner. My Iwasaki has got exactly the same. The Japanese like doing this on some of the razors. Yeah, you see, um, there's still a little bit of, this razor oxidates very, very quickly on these rough areas. It had um, lots of um, rust on there. I'm, I'm still polishing some of those areas. But essentially, this is the razor. There we go. A nice close-up of what this um, beacon looks like. And it's got this lovely beacon on the stamp. And I've got... Um, need to replace a glove. So, uh, this, boys and girls, essentially was um, a razor hone and progression using Iwatani and Asano Naguras. Um, thank you for, uh, for sticking around. See you guys hopefully in a shave video with this one a little bit later on in the week. Ciao!